committee. I believe we are live on YouTube. Good afternoon, everybody. This is the Senate Institutions Committee from the Vermont State Legislature. We are on September 8th, Tuesday of 2020 in our continuing COVID-19 coverage. And we are here today to talk about H880, a bill that um, I guess I'll let the sponsor describe it. But essentially, um, we had a agenda that was looking at this as a two-day affair originally. But after looking at the actual language of the bill, it's only three paragraphs if you discount the intent language, seven sentences if you eliminate the effective date language. And I suspect quite strongly um, as much as the sponsor and Carol McGranahan is also here and Commissioner Schneider, who's also here, want to talk about it, we could probably vote on this today if everybody is in agreement. It doesn't seem to be very controversial, but I could be mistaken. I suppose we'll find out the answer to that question momentarily. Um, and it's for introductions. I am Joe Benning, the chair of the committee from Caledonia County. We have Senator Mazza from Grand Isle, Senator Lyons from Chittenden, Senator Hooker from Rutland, Senator Rogers, who is from Essex Orleans, will not be joining us today, but he did want me to let the committee know that he is in favor of this bill and fully supports it. With that, uh, the first person on my agenda is Representative Brian Chena. So Brian, if you are with us, um, I don't see you on video if you were planning to be there. And um, yep, there you go. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me here today to, uh, to present on H880. And um, I was gonna share, yeah, I'm a co-host now. So bear with me as I pull up a little, a short presentation um, that I gave in the house that I'll run through with you quickly. It should be about two or three minutes. Um, and bear with me because we are all adjusting to this new era of using this technology. So hopefully you see the right thing. Can you see um, a slideshow appearing before you? I do. All right, so here we go. So we have um, he here, we're, um, we're gonna talk about H880, an act relating to Abenaki place names on state park signs. Um, and uh, this picture you see here is uh, an example, this is a rock off the coast of Burlington. Its, it's colonial name is Rock Dunder. Its original ab, or aboriginal name is Odiozo. And there's a story about this rock being the creator of the Champlain Valley. So this is an example of a place that has um, a colonial name and an Abenaki name. And these days people are using the Abenaki name more to, do, to, to, to call this place. Um, so that's what this picture is. So. H-880, and um, can you see the next slide as I scroll? Yes. Okay, he had nods, okay. So H-880, it's an act relating to Abenaki place names on state park signs. And so sort of here's the rationale for the bill. Um, by adding Abenaki place names alongside colonial place names on the state park signs, the state intends to recognize that the state of Vermont exists on territory that was originally and is currently inhabited by Abenaki people. It increases visibility and awareness of the Abenaki people and culture. It helps to preserve and promote the Abenaki language. And it honors the history, significance, and spirit of places. So some examples of Abenaki place names. So I just gave you one, Odihozo, Rock Dunder, it means he who created himself. And you can see here, there's a list of place names from around the state of Vermont. Um, I didn't look at where each of you come from, but I, looking at your faces, I know you're from different regions. And some of these um, place names come from your areas. So you can see here, um, you know, we have in from North, from, from um, Senator Mazza, you're, you're in um, Franklin County, Grand Isle. Oh, Grand Isle. Grand Isle, Frank, yeah. So Grand Isle, Fra the Grand Isle County, you can see Missisquoi um, is near your area. That's Place of Flint. Um, you can see here, um, Senator Benning, where are you from? I'm from Caledonia County, but you've got the Connecticut River there. Right, so you've got Quinetico. Um, you're, you also, you're in the area where um, Brunswick Springs are, but there's not a name for that right now. Um, I, that just, I, uh, I just had my first tour of Brunswick Springs about three weeks ago. Oh, great. Yeah, so, so uh, I, no one has yet told me a name that people have found for Brunswick Springs, but that's an example of a site it would be, that we might 
someday find that there's a name for, but we have Connecticut here, um, so Long River. Um, and Senator Hooker, you're down near, are you near, I'm looking at these mountains. Otter so. Creek. Okay, so. Otter Creek. I don't know if you want to try saying the Abenaki name for that. It's a hard one. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to try because I, I, I would look for that. What's that? I don't, is it when it, when can we sispo? I don't know. Go ahead, yeah, Bruce. Nice try and try it again. Yeah, it's a nice try. Um, and I, I, I would have a hard time with that one. But I think the point here is that um, this is a list that was generated um, that Rich Holshu pu published. I have the source down at the bottom of the screen there. People can check it out. Um, this is just a, a preliminary name. The idea of the bill, and I don't know if we're going to have Ledge Council run through those three paragraphs, was, would be that the Commission on Native American Affairs would work with the state to sort of manage a list of names. So this is a starting point, but over time, as more place names emerge and are identified, the state could slowly add those names to state park signs. And the idea is that we would do this as we replace the signs. So the fiscal impact wouldn't be large. It would just be as a sign gets replaced, we would have, a, have another name to add to the sign queued up and and slowly over time, we would we would see Abenaki language appearing around the state in different regions, um, reminding people of the history of our state, and and also um, reminding people that Abenaki people are still here. Um, so I, I don't want to take up too much time because the chair of the commission is here, and I think that the chair of the commission can speak more about what this means for the, for Abenaki people. Um, I, I just wanted to present the basic idea of the bill. Um, and I do have some other possible witnesses here that we heard from in the, some of which we heard from in the house. I think um, many of these witnesses have signed on to a letter that the chair of the commission can speak about. Um, so at this point, I'll just be quiet and, and make space for the chair and I can answer. Uh, and then I just have here questions um, in Abenaki that's Nadadmawaganal. So if anyone has Nadadmawaganal, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, Uliuni, Mia Nadobak, thank you, my friends. I hope the committee is paying attention. There'll be a test on this at the end of the day. <clears throat> Carol, I'm sorry, um, Ginny, <clears throat> Senator Lyons, you're on, on mute right now. There okay, you. yep, uh, thank you. Uh, no, I just wanted to ask uh, Representative Chena why he didn't ask me to pronounce Winooski. I didn't mean to leave you out. You know what it was? That no, was no, no, no. It was a joke. It okay. was a joke. Represented. Yeah, Peter. I'm going to, you know what, though, now that you bring it up, though, let's see if you can pronounce. Can you uh -oh. do, um, I see here Camel's Hump, which, and Mount Mansfield, which are both touching your Senate district. Oh, yes. Those? I did, I, I'm not looking at the word, but it was oh. something about most Musa Ghani or something like that. Here, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry about that. Oh, it's disabled That's okay. now. No. It's okay. It's I, um the camel's hump is Tawi Podiwajo or Motsi Ozagin, and Mount Mansfield is Mots did Mots Debi Wajo. So um, I just didn't see you in the little sidebar when I was looking at it. <laughs> like you didn't show up in the. I was lucky. No, I yeah. was lucky. You were spared. All right. So thank you. All right. I have um, <clears throat> Commissioner Schneider. You're up next on the agenda, but as I think about it. Um, Carol Granahan, who is the chair of the Vermont Commission on Native American Affairs, I'd like to pull you right in now as a segue to Representative China, um, and especially so you can answer the question, how bad did he assassinate the names he was pronouncing? Oh, dear. Yes. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for letting me join you today. Um, he actually does much better at the Abenaki language than I and I think that that has really been, for me, the most significant part about this bill is that our language was um, pretty much decimated. Um, it was written through the eugenics that it wasn't safe for people to admit that they were Abenaki. And of course, a big part of that being that culture is that you speak the language and for generations, the eugenics had actually affected whether the language survived or not. Um, there are a couple of people who um, teach the language now. I think that's where Brian, um, Representative China, has been learning it. 
I have an old brain and I don't, it doesn't wrap around those words so well, but um, the way that it affected my family, for instance, is that my great grandparents' um, family was named in the eugenics survey. And what that meant was that we were not taught about our culture. We were not taught our language. Um, we couldn't celebrate, we couldn't perform our spiritual practices. So for me, this bill is significant in the way that it's recognizing that we really do exist, that we have a separate culture and a separate language. So it's very significant in that way. Um, it also, I think, gives us a little bit more visibility. Um, when we used to be able to go to the state house, uh, the first visible and really tangible evidence that we were here was the new display with the Abenaki recognition um, items. So it gives people who are visiting the state also um, uh, an idea that there were indigenous people here, that it wasn't just a vacation land that everybody passed through while they were hunting and fishing. Um, and they were still here. So this is a face of a real person and I am Apodaki. So for me, um, recognizing and honoring the places that had names before the settlers came is also part of our um, noting that Places are sacred, land is sacred. So um, all of that rolled in. That's why we worked with uh, Brian on getting the bill together. Of course, if you would like to be more aggressive, I would let you name and add signage in addition to the ones that you're replacing. But that's, that's me. So thank you very much. Committee questions? Carol, there's another Carol who is an Abnaki who lives in Albany, and I'm forgetting her last name. Carol Irons, yes. Well, she happens to live across the street from my sister-in-law. Oh, okay. And we had Thanksgiving together last year. Oh, nice. And she was mentioning that she was very frustrated that the Abnaki had been promised a display and the state was dragging its heels. So I just want you to know that as a result of my position, I undragged those heels a little bit and got in touch with our state house curator and made sure you guys got something in there before we got out of the session. It's a great display. I appreciate this bill. And so just you and Brian know, um, I travel quite a bit throughout the North American continent and you are not blazing new ground here. The Kota Sioux have similar place names, the Cherokee down in Tennessee. Um, I have been noticing those signs because I'm a historian at heart. And I really think it adds great flavor to wherever the location happens to be. So I, I appreciate you guys working on this bill and getting it to us. Any other questions or comments before we move on? Cheryl. Um, I just want to say thank you to Carol and to Representative Chena for bringing this to the committee, um, to the process. I've learned a lot just in this really small amount, short amount of time, a lot that I didn't know and I, I'm ashamed to say it. But um, I hope that we can get this through the process and get it voted on and through the Senate um, before we leave in a week or two. Commissioner Schneider, I believe you're up next on the agenda. Greetings. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. For the record, Michael Schneider, Commissioner of Forest Parks and Recreation. And um, I'm happy to join here, uh, having done so previously in the House. And uh, I can mostly restate what I said there is pretty short. Um, I, we, I and we enthusiastically support um, the purposes, the idea here, and certainly the purposes, uh, and want to make it happen. And I would simply add to that, um, I think, um, a couple of 
points that are my responsibility to make, I suppose, that um, want to make sure that we have a, an accurate understanding of the expectations, what, what it is we're trying to do here. Um, I think I hear it. I'm not sure the bill language actually says it. And I, I don't mean to interfere with your accelerated pace here, Mr. Chair. I think we can, we can handle that. But I just want to be clear about uh, what it's saying so that we get it right. And, we, and because I think it's very important to do this well, um, respectfully and meaningfully, and I don't want to miss it. So uh, with a couple of questions about accuracy, clarity, if you will, accuracy and costs uh, to be flagged, uh, I'll circle back and say we enthusiastically support this, want to get this done. And if now's the appropriate time, I would just call your attention to a couple of those questions. Does that make sense, Mr. Chair? Sure. Yeah. Great. Um, so I, I we can get to cost. I'd flag that as like, well, we have to have resources to do this. We are signs, signage, names are really important to everyone, whether you're Abenaki or not. It, it's true in state parks. Uh, and we take great care in our kind of brand, our look and feel. And so we see a great opportunity to have these sync up, um, but we, we wanna know what it is that we're promising to do so we can do it well in a way that meets the purposes and also complements our existing approach to signage, et cetera, and our brand. Um, and I don't know what that's gonna, I need the clarity before we can get a sense of how big an ask is this? There was a bit of a fiscal note drawn. There was a fiscal note drawn in the house, but a lot of assumptions about it. And I want to zero in on that because it's not terrible, but we do need to flag that money's an issue. It was an issue in February pre-COVID. It's certainly an issue now after, um, during the pandemic. Anyway, the question I really have about, so I just flag, I'm sorry to be garbled here. I'm just trying to flag that we have a concern about the cost because I, I need to know what it is we're going to do, how much that'll cost, so we can make a plan for it uh, responsibly to get it done. <laughs> what I'm asking is, we are to, to confirm that we are not content. This legislation does not contemplate renaming parks. It's about signing with Abenaki place names when we know what those are. And so I want to be clear. Everyone's nodding. The sponsor, Representative Chinas, <laughs> nodding. That's good. Uh, and then it becomes, we have a lot of signs. We have entrance signs that are very important. We have signs, we're in the process of um, evolving those entrance signs to have um, sort of world recognized icons for certain activities within a park that would go on that entrance sign. So we're in the process of kind of reimagining that. That could be a great opportunity to, to sort of note, hey, note Abenaki place names within this park, something like that. Uh, but then we get into the park and, I, and I'm wondering, are we talking about, so in the case of you have on the list, you heard Mount Mansfield, we have Mount Mansfield State Park or, or Underhill State Park at Mount Mansfield. Mount Mansfield State Forest is not a park. I'll, I'll, I'll use Camel's Hump, it's on the list here. Camel's Hump State Park. We're not proposing to, um, that the mountain is the name. Uh, and so I, I guess what I'm trying to get at is, are we naming features within a park or just parks that are named for a feature like a Scutney or Camel's Hump uh, that, that they themselves have an Abenaki name. I'm sorry to be so inarticulate here. What I wanna know, and I'm wondering if I could just ask through the chair to get, maybe the sponsor could clarify. It's, it's all Abenaki place names within a park that you would love us to identify. Is that correct? As opposed to just a park whose current English name has an Abenaki name as well. Like we have a Scutney State Park, Mount of Scutney has an Abenaki name. But within a Scutney State Park, there may be additional land features that could have Abenaki names. And I'd be interested if the intent is also to sign those, which we'd be happy to do. But if we get into more than just those basic place names for the park itself, that's a bigger number and a larger task to plan. Uh, forgive me. Uh, thanks for your patience. Uh, uh, is the question clear? Yeah. Do, do I have permission to answer it? it absolutely. Okay. So, because I don't believe I, now I don't have the bill up in front of me, but I don't believe there's like a, a big intent section or anything that explains this. Um, right. But for the record, I can tell you what my, my intent is, and maybe Chair McGranahan could chime in too, um, that for 400 years, there's been a process in place on this land of erasing 
the place names and replacing them with other names. And we see this bill as turning the tide and, and starting to acknowledge the original place names, the Aboriginal place names over the next 400 years. Like this isn't like in the next year, every state park needs to change its name or add, it, or add to the sign a name or every land. It's a process. It, it, it initiates a relationship between your um, section of government and the, and the Native American Affairs Commission, a relationship that over time will generate ideas that you could incorporate into the signs. And so I think it's pretty open. Like as time goes by, if I, in my vision, when I'm very elderly and retired and traveling around the state of Vermont in a hundred years that, um, that, you know, I could go through different state parks and see the Abenaki place names all over the place. But, you know, that's a long-term vision. I think the short-term vision is to start getting some Abenaki on some signs, you know? And if the easy thing for you to do is add it to a few entrance signs first, we would, we would appreciate that. And then I think over time, it would trickle into other, you know, other areas of state parks and hopefully other areas of our society as people see this happening, that other um, towns, municipalities, organizations would start looking to add Abenaki names to, um, to signage and to our vocabulary as a state. So, uh, Michael, I do have the bill in front of me and I'm a lawyer, so I suppose I can do a little ledge council reading here very first substantive sentence in the document says the commissioner before installing new signs or replacing existing signs in a state park shall consult with the Vermont Commission on Native American Affairs to determine if there is an Abenaki name for any site within the park. If the commission advises the commissioner of an Abenaki name, the Abenaki name shall be displayed with the English name. We're going to pause there. That's the first paragraph. Yep. That seems pretty clear to me. Unless and until you are about to replace a sign or put up a new sign, you don't have to do anything at all. <clears throat> Once a sign is going to be put in, I envision you would be making a phone call unless you've been provided with an advanced list of names for that particular locality. And I guess I would question whether or not a fiscal note is necessary to have you making such a phone call or looking at a list that you've been provided with. I didn't see this as having any money attached to it whatsoever, other than perhaps the extra paint you have to put on the, the sign itself. But one of the things that would kill this bill for this term in a heartbeat is if we say there's money attached to it in some fashion. And if there is, that's a whole nother problem. And I guess I would need to know right off the bat whether you believe there is some kind of money attached to this attempt. Okay, thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm not an attorney, um, and, but um, for what it's worth, I read it the same way. Uh, so that's good. Uh, and I wanted to hear you all say it. I think that's very important. And in fact, in, in part, maybe some of my questions come from remembering in the spring and then maybe there was a bigger conversation and there at, at one point this was in a different form at least to some extent possibly and there were these questions about how many when uh signs that is and uh that's why they asked for the fiscal notes i said well we need to know how much um i just to be okay. clear i am not suggesting right now that there needs to be any fiscal barrier to your moving this legislation right now, okay? Right. I'm not, I just wanna be on the record saying, I've asked the question, I wanted clarity about what we're being asked to do because you know, down the hall as it were, I get asked, well, why are you doing this? <laughs> you know, you don't have any money for that. <clears throat> so it's fair. Oh yeah, uh, I, I so, noticed that there's a lot of language that was in the original bill that has been crossed off. Right. So there so, may have been a fiscal note at that time that was requested. But let me read the second paragraph. The right. commissioner shall adopt rules establishing a procedure for selecting the spelling of the name if there are multiple spellings provided by the Commission on Native American Affairs. Do you envision any kind of a need for um, a fiscal note on that particular question? No. My, my question about funding is was about 
uh, the, you know, we have a lot of signs and, and excitement about replacing them or adding to them with Abenaki names once we have a list and know where to put them. I think there's a lot of features out there. It was all about that, being able to make the signs without, with respect, not just splashing some paint around, but making some classy signs that get this done the right way. Uh, we wanted to be able to be prepared for that. So I, I have no further concerns and certainly the rulemaking is not a cost concern for me. It, it goes to my last question, which was about sort of accuracy. And it came up in the house committee in a conversation that there were, um, I guess, separate bands uh, who were acknowledging they have different spellings for the same places, two different Abenaki spellings. And my concern in there is that I would love to do this. As we keep saying, um, I don't wanna, we're not qualified to make that decision. So this was a surprise to me in the house where it became, well, you go to rulemaking to figure out how to deal with confusion over names. I'd like some help with that is all I'm saying. I don't think the commissioner of FBR should be saddled with that. Cause again, this is all about this being important, meaningful and getting it right. So yeah. that's my last question was, What's the expectation there? Because clearly I can't be the arbiter through rule rulemaking of the correct spellings. No, Carol, I, I see you have your hand up, but I, I'm going to start before I go back to you by saying it is vested with the Commission of Native American Affairs to give you the exact spelling that they want. So if an individual band, say the Missisquoi was um, at odds with the Nolhegan and how to spell something, it's the commissioner of Native American Affairs who was going to have, I'm sorry, the commission of Native American Affairs, right. who was going to have the ultimate call on how that spelling will be. Carol, you had your hand up. Yes, thank you. I, I was going to say that um, the commission is actually the umbrella over all four. So we have representatives um, in, in a perfect world, we have representatives from all four of the tribes on our commission. Um, and I have, um, I'm a member of one of the tribes, but I also um, have good relationships with the other three. So I see that as our role um, in communicating with all four and making sure that they agree that the, the spelling that, that we sponsor is actually okay with everyone. So that's part of our process is that we communicate with all four um, chiefs and the tribes and um, come to consensus on what the spelling would be. So that's up to us. And that I expected that was our responsibility. Mr. Chair, the okay. bill, the language, though, it, again, maybe I need the, your legal counsel here, but as I read it, the, the, the language is saying that the commission shall present uh, the list and they will uh, state if there are multiple names or spelling variations for a place. It doesn't say that they will decide which one. It says they will give me a list, and my reading of this says that list may have multiple names on it. My responsibility is to go to rulemaking to sort that out. And I, I'm nervous about that, I'm gonna be honest. Again, I don't mean to be the skunk at this party. I'm asking these questions because I want this to happen soon and well. Well, the way that I'm reading it, Michael, um, the Commission on Native American Affairs is going to have to provide you a list and um, it would be strongly encouraged to provide you a list with individual names, not multiple names. Otherwise, I agree with you that you're gonna to have to figure out a rule to decide between which. And the only thing I can suggest is if a given location is within the boundary of a particular tribe and somebody else in another tribe is suggesting a different spelling, I think you've got your rule right there that you abide by the local tribe. Representative Chena, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just, I had some thoughts on this because I did speak with some of the chiefs about this after it passed the house, the sort of people were questioning it. And one recommendation that was made was that perhaps the commission would work with um, one of the Abenaki language protectors or keepers or linguists to, to work this out or that the, when you're making rules, you may consider, at, you know, I don't know what, how to, I don't know in your rulemaking process what authority you have, 
to set a rule around asking the commission to do that or you doing that. But the point is that, um, that there are language experts that could be consulted. And so if this is gonna be a barrier, perhaps the solution is for the commission to try to send one name. And if there's two names to maybe give you some information about how they, um, you know, where just suggestions about how to resolve that, you know. But, but the main thing was that there are language keepers and linguists that could be consulted to help iron these, um, these details out because there are different spellings and, and um, different histories that people have kept, so. Right. So I'm gonna read the last paragraph. On or before March 15th of 2021, the Vermont Commission on Native American Affairs shall prepare a list of places and landmarks with Abnaki names. The list shall state if there are multiple names or spelling variations for a place. The commission shall present the list to the Commissioner of Forest Parks and Recreation in order to facilitate the construction of signs as required. The commission shall also determine if there are sites outside of state parks with Abnaki names that require new signs. Um, I'm not sure, Brian, where you were going with that last sentence because this deals with state parks. Can you give me an example of someplace outside that uh, the commissioner would actually have jurisdiction over? I think the idea was that if there's road signs leading to state parks, that they would, that they would provide that information. I, I don't think there's anything in here that makes anyone else do anything. But the idea was like, if you were gonna have on the entrance sign of Camel's Hump State Park, the name of Camel's Hump, that that sharing that information with the people who put up road signs, that they may over time decide to add that to the road sign that says camel sump, but there's no requirement. It really was about trying to disseminate the knowledge out outside and to start raising awareness outside of the state parks of the place names. So I think that was where we were going with that one. Um, acknowledging that changing road signs was such a big thing to get into. So instead of mandating that, it was more about sharing information with people um, to see if it may over time lead to the addition of Abenaki place names to signs that are not located within the boundaries of a state park. Because I think that was that, that's really, once you get beyond the entrance, who has jurisdiction about signs that say Camel's Hump leading to Camel's Hump State Park? And this is something we talked about, um, not wanting to necessarily um, mandate change, but give people knowledge if they choose to add that to science. So. so it is vesting the Commission on Native American Affairs with the responsibility of coming up with new signs. But as far as the commissioner of uh, forest and parks, there's nothing in this language that ties him or her to having to respond to that list. That's safe to say? Yes, exactly, yeah. It's about the commission. I mean, as I'm reading the language, it's about, it's actually the commission who basically after they have this list of, that they give um, for, forest parks and recreation that the commission would share, would, would have, you know, that information to share with others. Um, it doesn't really say anyone else has to do anything. It just says the right. commission will determine if there are other sites that, that requires, you know, that, that that require signage, so. Well, when you come up with that list, I, I will wish you success in approaching the respective transportation committees to talk about the next. <coughs> I got a question. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I, I, I wanna, before we pass this, I wanna make sure that Commissioner Schneider can pronounce every name that we discussed a few moments ago. <laughs> I'm working on it, Senator. I'm okay. working on it for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a lot of faith in you, so I want to make sure that you're you're on board with this. Thing. I got what you said. I think I'm doing pretty well there. <laughs> Quebec, yes. Uh, we'll, I'll keep working. I don't okay. mean to make light of it. It's uh, it, there's some uh, that's part of the the issue. I think is to understand that um, um, there's a lot of different ways to to know these places, uh, and they've been known for a long time. So again. Um, Appreciate it. Um, so, so Mr. Chair, if I could, though, I guess uh, I, I want to clarify. I just want to make sure. Um, again, given that as written now, as as it's before you, um, it, it it it's asking for a list 
and, and, and acknowledging that there may be multiple names, but remaining sort of unclear about that. It's saying that the commission delivers a list and all they need to do is let me know that there's, there's multiple names on some of them. Uh, that's, and it, it, seems, it would be your job then to take that list and decide which name you're going to put on the sign. Right. And I'm flagging for you that I think that's inappropriate, respectfully. Right. I, I agree with you. And, but within that you want, that they want. Right. right. And I want to get it right. So within, but I could go to rulemaking and say, uh, I want this commission. I want the linguists. Uh, do I get to do that in rulemaking? Is just reach out no. and grab I mean, It should be done now. It should be done in the uh, upfront, I would think, right, right to direct it. Right. That's I, I don't mean to slow it down. I'm, I really don't. I feel bad, seeming like I'm putting up a roadblock. I'm not. I just want to get it right, and I think this is an important detail um, about the the accuracy here. And um, so, uh, I appreciate your consideration of that. No, I appreciate your concern, Michael. And I'm, I'm trying to. Um... If you are the person vested with the authority of adopting rules, unless and until a list is produced that has multiple names, the question is moot. It is relevant believe, only if you get a list that has multiple names. I believe we have one already. So, so we have a uh, we have an early copy of a list. I want to, by the way, I want to tell you, near as I can tell, there are 15 state parks affected with the partial list we have so far, which is okay. that's a fun fact. I believe there are some on here that have been identified already as having multiple spellings. So, so if if you're developing rules, I've suggested that a good way to resolve the conflict is to adopt the rule of the local tribe that covers that geographical area. Makes sense to me. Um, but you're the one vested with the rules. You, you could come up with a rule that says, I'm going to flip a coin and have uh, that decide the issue. Uh, Representative China has his hand up. And yeah. I'll go I, to Cheryl. And I, you know, I, I mean, just speaking of the, it sounds like, you know, if the commission could, could iron out details that would eliminate a problem, but if, could it be, I mean, this is sort of a question for, um, for forest parks and recreation is, is um, would, could a rule be that if the commission doesn't provide us with one spelling, we will choose the spelling based on which band, the preference of the band whose territory it falls in. And that would basically say to the commission, you better figure this out or else we're gonna choose for you and choose it by the band. And then that would give them, see, I see Carol's thumbs up. I don't know if that's allowed to be, if you have, are allowed to do that as a rule, but I think that would be a way to solve this issue without us having to change the bill. And part of your rule should be that if the conflict is unresolvable by the commission, uh, that you are the final arbiter of what the name will be. There's really no other way to approach it. You have to be the final caller. Any other issues you've got, Michael? Uh, no. Um, no. Okay, Senator Hooker and then Senator Lyons. Well, I, I just, I guess I question how this would slow the process down if we were simply to amend the bill to say that the commission um, the list that the commission provided the um, commissioner would be with the preferred spelling. The answer to your question immediately is it would then have to go back to the house for yeah. consideration. And we are running out of time. Hope that answers your question. Well, it, it does. Gonna, and and I'm just, happen. you know, it ain't going to happen. Okay. So we'll just go with your suggestion with the rule. Senator Lyons. My question is uh, for Carol, and what are the chances that the commission would be um, coming up with a list that would be very difficult to sort out in terms of spelling or naming? Uh, it, 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 it seems to me that we already have the beginning of a list where there are two alternatives would the commission be able to pick one of those alternatives for the 
uh, Commissioner of Forest Parks and Recreation. Uh, I'm just wanting to know whether or not you think there's controversy embedded in this. No, I don't. Much. I don't believe there would be controversy, and I think um, Senator Benning is correct in that. If there does happen to be two spellings or two different names, even that the territory that um, whichever territory is involved, that the chief there would um, would be the one to make really the final decision. But that I see the commission's role, uh, the Native American Affairs role, as being um, kind of the go-between. Um, we do have linguists and um, two of the people in Nohegan do teach the language and they're very much um, knowledgeable about the history of these places. Um, and I'm hoping that all four of the tribes will uh, be receptive of whatever uh, the linguists prefer. Um, but again, I, I don't see that as the role of the parks. I see that as the role of the commission to hammer all of the, the details out before the list is given to parks and recreation. Does that answer it for you, Michael? Well, well, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know that it does. I, mean, I think what, what Carol is saying is is kind of making my point that they they should do it. This is leaving it to me. It's hoping they'll give me the list, and I would certainly expect or request that, uh, de depend upon it, defer to it. This doesn't. This bill doesn't say that, right? I understand your time frame. Listen, I, 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 I'm being put in a place where it appears I am opposing something that I'm very excited about supporting. Um, and I understand the time frame. I just have to do my job and I feel like it's responsible to point out that this is a little bit um, out of sequence, it seems. And I believe that um, Ms. McGanahan is saying the same thing, that they're the ones to do it. This, this doesn't sync with what's here. But you have the authority to make rules that set a process, put a process in place and require the commission to come to you with a list, a recommended list. The rules are, you, you have a lot of authority during the rulemaking uh, process with this uh, language. And if something really um, significant happens between now and January, I, I think that um, there's room for improvement going forward, but I can't imagine this would, uh, I think this is a really good place to begin. You have a March 15th, 21 date that the Commission of Native American Affairs is supposed to come up with a list. So whatever list you have right now, while it, it may be causing a little heartburn, it's not the list you have to use. They need to come up with a list a signal is clearly being sent that the commission has to get its act together in order to not provide you with any more conflict that you need to deal with. But at the end of the day, Michael, I'm still going to suggest when you adopt rules, you are the person who ends up as the final arbiter of what it will be. And I've only suggested that the local tribe be deferred to as one of your thought process in trying to move it forward. Senator Mazda. I understand what the commissioner is saying and uh, I will support this um, if, if, if we clear up his concerns. I, I think it's a very important issue. It's not something that uh, we have to do immediately. I'd rather get it clear now and uh, I support it, but I also wanna make sure that the burden is not placed on him to have to make choices. I'd rather have it clearly spelled out. It comes to him with that name. He does his job, he carries it forward. There's no questions asked. That's my spin. So the logistics are somewhat <clears throat> problematic and I don't know how to deal with that. Um, we are suggesting, or at least I'm hearing a suggestion that there needs to be language changed here. If language is changed here, that means the bill has to go back to the house for consideration and we're running out of time. Um, 
uh, Mr. Well, Mr. Well, Chair, if yeah. I may, I'm, could I please? I, I really appreciate Senator Maza uh, stating his, his understanding of my concern and appreciate that very much. And, and I really want to help find a way through here. And, and, and I, I think um, his well stated support notwithstanding, I, I'm willing to, to stand down on this. I mean, it's not really my decision. I get to share my thoughts, you decide, but I, I would encourage you that, to move ahead. I guess what this is the, the last piece, it's, it's not really about me. And that's kind of the point is, I don't know what is to come. And I think that the way you have it here, you could have a commissioner who hasn't been part of this conversation, who thinks very differently about it, and who sets rules that, that are not, that, that you, Senator Lyons said, you have all the authority here, you get to decide. I don't think that's good policy to set it up so flimsy. It's something that's this important. And, and I say that respectfully, I just mean, it could be, I could decide to do something terribly different with that if I have that much authority. I, I understand it says shall here and there, but I, I, I established the procedure for selecting the spelling of place names, um, that, which could be, you know what, if they're in conflict, we're not doing it, right? Isn't that a possible outcome? And I don't think we want that. Ryan, can I ask what committee this came through in the House? It came through the, the General Housing and Military Affairs Committee, since that committee generally um, engages with uh, Native American issues. You know who the chair of that committee is? Tom Stevens. Okay. Anybody else want to bring anything else up? I guess I need to just flag, if I could, Mr. Chair, you, I'm sure you've already caught it, but the effective date probably wants to get advanced as well. Right? Yep, I saw that. Um, okay, committee, I don't think we're going to vote on this today. I want to talk with Tom Stevens and I want to uh, see if there isn't a way to clear this. Michael, if we had some kind of language in there that made it clear that the commission shall resolve any disputes about place names prior to sending the list? Yeah, that's that's the idea, Senator. I appreciate it. And again, I'm ready to sort of stand down and keep in, in support of this, but I feel better having flagged it and you guys get to decide how important that flagging is here and what how much time you have. And if you gave it a day to sort that out and see what it could look like in a conference, say, um, maybe it's worth it. But I just want to, I'm on the record saying I support this and I want to be clear about that and do not wish to hold it up. But I feel it's important to, that we all understand the clarity about how it works. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to weigh in today? Okay, guys, thank you all for coming. We're going to be meeting again tomorrow at two o'clock. I'll see if we can't get some answers prior to that happening. Thank you. Thank you. This will conclude the Senate Institutions meeting for September 8th.